Yellowstone supervolcano latest? Caldera Systems, a worldwide family that is more than just Yellowstone supervolcano. This is today's Caldera Chronicles latest issue. It's a weekly column written by scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone. This week's contribution from Mike Poland, the geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey, scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Yellowstone as a volcanic system may seem unique, with its history of huge explosive eruptions and lava flows. The explosive eruptions is an energetic eruption producing mainly ash, pumice, and fragmental ballistic debris as, effused, as opposed to the effusive eruption. These are explosive. And the lava flows that uh, we've had here, general term for the magma, the molten rock that's erupted onto the surface of the earth and maintains its integrity as a fluid or viscous mass rather than the exploding uh, fragments. So we have both types of eruptions here. But did you know that there are similar caldera systems spread across the globe? And many of these are far more vol volcanically active than Yellowstone. The United States is home to three large caldera systems that have erupted in the last two million years. Yellowstone is one, of course, and then we have the Long Valley Caldera, in Eastern California, near the town of Mammoth Lakes. It's also well known, and we've had an uptick of quakes there because of the Ridgecrest earthquakes, that's normal. And Yellowstone has had an uptick of earthquakes because of Ridgecrest as well, because it has jolted the area. So the caldera of Long Valley formed with a massive eruption 760,000 years ago and numerous high silica lava flows Silica is the silicon dioxide that's the most abundant rock-forming compound on Earth and the predominant molecular constituent of volcanic rocks and magmas. It tends to polymerize into molecular chains, increasing the viscosity of the magma. Basaltic magma, having lower silicon dioxide, is fairly fluid, but with increased contents of silicon dioxide, andesite, dacite, rhyolite magmas become more viscous because it's more difficult for dissolved gas to escape from more viscous magma higher silica magmas generally erupt more explosively so uh, 760,000 years ago numerous high silica lava flows from long valley caldera have subsequently erupted within and near the caldera and there is also a chain of silicic lava flows and domes that extends from north valley from the long valley uh, caldera Towards the Mono Lake, the most recent eruption along this Mono Inyo chain occurred only about 250 years ago. That's pretty recent. Long Valley is very active seismically, in large part because the caldera sits atop faults that have caused uplift of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. The caldera also deforms with more than 30 inches of uplift measured since 1980. Some hot springs occur in the caldera, hot springs just like we have in Yellowstone, although not nearly at the same scale as Yellowstone. Yellowstone has 60% of the world's geysers and over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. Now, the third system is Valles Caldera, that's located in northern Mexico near Los Alamos. That caldera formed during large uh, explosions, two large explosions, 1.61 and 1.25 million years ago. Although Vallis also experimented numerous lava flow eruptions after caldera formation, just like Yellowstone and Long Valley, it is not particularly active today. There is no significant seismicity and no ground deformation there, and only one small hot spring. The most recent eruption occurred about 68,000 years ago. That's not far from the 70,000 year ago eruption that we had in Yellowstone, by the way, which, is a, which was a lava eruption. And since the 70,000 a year ago in Yellowstone, we've had another 80 eruptions since then in Yellowstone. Uh, now, it goes on to say here that there are many other caldera systems in the United States, although these are much older and long extinct. The San Juan Mountains of Southern Colorado host numerous calderas that were active about 30 million years ago. 
And of course, there is a trail of calderas caused by motion of the North American plate over the Yellowstone hotspot and since buried by younger lava flows, forming the eastern Snake River Plain over the past 17 or so million years. The U.S. is hardly alone in playing host to caldera systems, though. Calderas can be found in volcanic areas all around the world. Nearly as famous as Yellowstone is Campi Flegri Caldera near Naples, Italy. Experienced violent explosions, explosive eruptions about 39,000 years ago, and also 59, uh, 15,000 years ago, although neither was anywhere near the size of the largest explosive eruptions from Yellowstone system. On the other hand, Campi Flegri, like Yellowstone, experiences frequent earthquake swarms and even outdoes Yellowstone when it comes to ground deformation, with several meters of uplift occurring over the last century alone. Campi Flegri's most recent eruption formed the Mount Monte Nuovo cinder cone in 1538. Then we have the Greek island of Santorini in the Aegean Sea. It's also part of a caldera, having experienced a large explosion about 3,700 years ago, they said that Santorini, the Thera eruption, was most probably at the time of the exodus of Moses and the tribes of Israel from Egypt. So that exploded 3,700 years ago, an eruption that might have been the source of the myth of Atlantis, the sinking of Atlantis. There were many subsequent lava flow eruptions, the most recent in 1950, during 2011 and 12, uplift and seismicity at Santorini demonstrated that the caldera is far from extinct. Another restless caldera can be found in Chile, the Laguna del Maule system. There have been at least three caldera forming eruptions there in the past four and a half million years, and numerous flows have occurred in the last 25,000 years. Uplift started at Laguna del Maule in the mid 2000s reaching a rate of 10 inches, 10 inches per year. That's astonishingly... 10 inches a year? I mean, all right, that's almost a foot a year. Now, in Japan, the Aira caldera in southern Kyushu formed about 30,000 years ago, and it's home to the Sakurajima volcano, which is one of Japan's most active volcanoes. The tall volcano in the Philippines, that's about to, uh, they're expecting that to blow any day now, is a caldera system that erupted earlier this year, and the Rabaul in Papua New Guinea has been persistently active since the 1990s. Indonesia hosts many caldera systems, the most famous of which is probably Toba, which experienced an epic eruption 76,000 years ago. The Taupo caldera system of the North Island of New Zealand, that's a supervolcano by the way, might be the most similar to Yellowstone, given the concentration of hot springs and geysers, as well as frequent seismic activity and deformation. Tapov's explosive eruption 26,500 years ago was larger than Yellowstone's big eruption 631,000 years ago, and Tapov's last significant eruption occurred about 1,800 years ago. By the way, that, that, that Tapo supervolcanic eruption of 26,500 years ago, they said was uh, almost, almost an extinction level event for humans. Anthropologists uh, from what, one of the past videos that we did on this claimed that there was only about 2,000 couples left worldwide, 2,000 couples after that eruption. It was a, you know, it had an effect worldwide uh, with the ash clouds darkening and uh, the toxic air. Now, he goes on here to say that we tend to think of Yellowstone as unique, and certainly it is with respect to the dense concentration of hot springs, geysers, and mud pots found there. In terms of volcanic style, however, there are many similar caldera systems around the world, some of which have had larger eruptions and some smaller, some of which are restless and some dormant. All have lessons to teach and are a focus of volcanologists around the world, he says. I'll leave links below for you for this on Caldera Chronicles. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, 
you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.